Yeah, you're young, you don't need that. <laughs> I seen you with glasses on the other day, though. Yeah, sometimes I wear glasses just to look smarter, you know. <laughs> just to look smarter. <laughs> so people don't think I'm stupid. Yeah. So. You're not a groundhog. <laughs> yeah, I think today is groundhog. Groundhog is stupid. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are stupid. So, uh, in the last couple of weeks in our church, we are preaching a sermon series called God of the Impossible. And I preach a message called Stand Still and Let God Move. And today I want to preach another message uh, associated with the series, The God of the Impossible, and the title is The Greatest Miracle. Now, now I'm going to give you five miracles in the Bible, and I'm going to draw a conclusion in the end. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind man came into him, and Jesus said unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. So the first miracle we see in the Bible is Jesus healed the blind. But notice that the question that Jesus asked the blind man, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they say, Yea, I believe, Jesus, you are able to heal my eyes. And then Jesus told them, According to your faith, be it unto you. Because you believe I can do miracles, but because you believe I am the God of the impossible, that's why I'm going to heal you. And from this miracle, we know that sometimes, as Brother Brian preached last Sunday night, the, the one thing that hindered God to do miracles in our life is the sin of unbelief. Because the Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, what, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. If you believe God will answer a prayer, if you believe God can do miracles, it's going to do that. And we should, we should come to God in a sense that He will do everything. You know, He is the God of the impossible. The Bible says in Matthew 17, verse 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. If you just have a faith of, of as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall remove mountains. The problem is, the reason we don't see God work miracles in our life is we don't believe God can do miracles. We don't actually believe God is the God of the impossible, right? And sometimes, in our Christian life, we lose sight of our dreams, of our prayers. You know, in, in the story, the blind man was physically blind, right? Jesus healed him. Sometimes we are spiritually blind. We lose sight in the things of life. Maybe we, we've been praying for something for so long and we give up. But the Bible says we walk not by sight. We, will, we walk by faith, not by sight. And we should keep pursuing, you know, keep pursuing the God of the impossible. In Judges chapter 8, you know, Gideon was fighting against an army uh, that's without number, right? And after Gideon defeated, defeated the army, and Gideon, along with the 300 men, was pursuing them. And, and the Bible says in Judges chapter 8, verse 4, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him faint yet pursuing them. You know, these men, they were faint pursuing the enemy, but the Bible says, even though they were faint, they are still pursuing the enemy. Because sometimes we lose sight of the things of life. Sometimes, sometimes we may sprint in our Christian life, but sometimes we may need to slow down and walk. Because the Christian life is not always a sprint. It's, it's an endurance battle, right? We should keep running. If you, if you can't run anymore, maybe you should start, start walking. And the only way for you to lose your sight is to quit. Because God is the God of the impossible, and He will deliver you as long as you stay on the course. But I was in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, that, And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. See, the Christian life is a life of pursuit. It's a life 
of fighting spiritual battles. Sometimes we lose sight on the things of life. We lose sight on why didn't God answer my prayer. But we should believe that God is able to answer. God is able to do miracles. See, the, the problem, uh, the, the reason God healed the blind man is he believed God is able to heal him. He believes that God can work miracles. That also is in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 13. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Even if we are suffering through tribulations and persecutions, the Bible commands us to be not faint. Keep pursuing. Now the second miracles we see in the Bible is in Acts chapter 3. The Bible says in Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame, from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple to ask and on. So the second miracle uh, that the Bible is about to perform is we see a lame man, a lame man who came to the temple and he saw Peter and John and he's about to ask them on, to ask them money, to ask them for possession, right? Because they are begging for food, they're begging for money. And verse number four, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. So the lame man expects Peter and John to give him money, to give him alms, to give him possessions, to give him food. And then Peter, Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle Bones received strength, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. I want you to realize the context. The lame man went to the temple. He expects to receive silver and gold. He expects to receive food and raiment and money. But Peter told him, silver and gold have I now. I don't have all this money, but I can ask Jesus to heal you in his name. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, what do you really want? Do you want money, or do you want a life change? Do you want money, or do you want Jesus cure your lame so that you can walk? Sometimes we ask for the wrong thing. We are asking for money, we are asking for fame, possession, relationships, asking for pleasure. But sometimes we need to think, what do we really want? Do we want Jesus to change your life, or do you just simply want money? See, the lame man, he expects to have money, but he receives something that's greater than money, because God is able to give you much more than this. God is able to help you to walk, help you to see, help you to hear. All we have to do is simply by having the right attitude. You know, David said in Psalm chapter 4, verse 7, Thou hast put gladness in my heart, more than in the time that, that their corn and their wine increased. I'd rather want the gladness, the joy of the Lord in me than having corn and wine and money and food. Because, you know, we have to simply ask ourselves, what do you really want? Do you want God to change your life? Or you simply just want earthly possessions? Simply want to have a place to stay, have food to eat? You know, these are necessary, you know, to have food to eat, right? But sometimes we have to look at the bigger picture. You know, do you want the life change or simply want money? So first we saw... God healed the blind. You know, we also saw that God made the lame man walk. Now let me show you the third miracle. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, and said, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So we saw that in the, the third miracle is the lepers came to Jesus, and then the leper asked Jesus, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. The Bible is saying that the, blind, the lepers asking Jesus, If that's a will. If thou wilt, right? If that's a will, thou can make me, make me clean. If it is a will, you are able to make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And his leprosy was cleansed. But notice that 
The leper asks you a very interesting question. If you are able to, if that's your will, you are able to make me clean. Implies that if it's not God's will, it's okay for me to stay that way so that you can show your glory through me. So the problem is, you know, if it's the will of God for you to be cleansed, if it's the will of God to answer a prayer, if it is the will of God so you can see, then God is able to do that. But if it's not God's will, if God wants you to stay blind, if God wants you to stay deaf, <laughs> He has His reason. You know, in the same way, let me just go to Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 3, uh, in Daniel chapter 3, we have the famous story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In Daniel chapter 3, verse number 16, the Bible says, So Nebuchadnezzar has set forth an image, and he commands everyone must bow down to the image, right? And the children of Israel, especially Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bow down. The, uh, and then they told Nebuchadnezzar, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and He will deliver us out of Thy hand, O King. So they, so they respond to King Nebuchadnezzar, if it be so, our God is able to deliver us, right? But in verse 18, but if not, but God choose not to deliver us, be it known unto Thee, O King, that we will not serve Thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So it's interesting, these two stories have a parallel, right? These lepers are asking Jesus, if that's your will, you are able to cleanse me. And, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego also told the king, our God is able to deliver us, but if he chooses not to, we will still not bow down to thee. Because sometimes we have to pray according to the will of God. If it is God's will, He is able to cleanse us. He's able to change our lives. But if God chooses not to, you know, He has a bigger plan for us. That's what I was in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. You know, God will answer our prayer. God will work miracles in our life if it is according to God's will. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that he, we have the petitions that we desire of Him. So again, in, so in the miracles of, of Jesus here, heal the blind, we know that we have to approach God with, with a believing heart. In the lesson of uh, Peter and John heal the lame guy, we know that we should ask for God to change our lives instead of asking something that does not matter, right? And in the story of the lepers being cleansed, we realize that our God is powerful. He's able to do anything. He can change, he can, he can cleanse the lepers. He can, he can make the blind see. But if God chooses not to, then He has a bigger plan for us. Let me give you the fourth miracle. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 31, the Bible says, and again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, Jesus came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of the Capitalists, and they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and, 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 and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and says unto him, if that, uh, that is, be open, and straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loose, and he spake, spake plain. So we saw the fourth miracle, that Jesus was able to make the deaf hear. Again, the, again, the key word in this passage is, and straightway his ears were opened. Now when Jesus wants to do a miracle in you, he's going to do it immediately. You know, in the Bible, throughout the miracles of Christ, you, you, you see the words straightly, immediately, and right away, because, you know, whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. So we have to expect God, again, will answer our prayer, and He will answer the according to His will, if that is His will, you know, He's going to work miracles in our life. Let me give you the last miracle. So we saw the blind see, we saw the lame walk, we saw the lepers are being cleansed, we saw the deaf here. Let me give you 
the fifth miracle. In Luke chapter 8, verse 49, the Bible says, While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden, and all wept and bewailed her. But, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. Okay, so, so in the fifth miracle, we saw that a girl is dead, right? And Jesus heard them uh, weeping and crying. He told them, saying, Fear not, believe only. But when Jesus told them that little maid is not dead, she just asleep, and their reaction was they laughed Jesus to scorn, because they, because they knew that little girl was dead indeed, right? But in verse 54, the Bible says, And he put them all, all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. So those people approached Jesus with an unbelieving heart, right? And again, one of, one of the major problems of Christians uh, that the prayers are not being answered, that we don't see God working miracles in our lives, is we have the sin of unbelief. And it is a sin to not believe in God. It is a sin to question God's power, question God's omniscience. Because when you came to God, we should expect that He will answer your prayers. Those people, they, they laugh Him to scorn. They are mocking Christ. You know, Jesus was telling them, don't, don't be afraid, just believe. You know, she's not dead, she's just asleep. But we also saw the merciful side of Jesus, even though they laughed him to scorn, he still raised her up. You know, Jesus still <laughs> raised, raised her up. But sometimes our unbelief will hinder God doing miracles. Our unbelief will hinder God working wonders in our lives, so we should approach God again. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall remove mountains. Sometimes we don't see God helping us. We don't see God working our lives as we are approaching God with the sin of unbelief. So we saw the first miracle that the, that the blind see, the second miracle the lame walk, the third miracle the lepers cleanse, the fourth miracle the deaf hear, and the fifth miracle the dead raised. But notice that the title of the sermon today is called The, the Greatest Miracle, right? Now the Bible is in Luke chapter 7 verse 22, Luke 7 verse 22. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. Now notice that this verse, you know, uh, Jesus was telling, uh, telling the, 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 the apostles to, to, to tell John the Baptist how the blind are able to see, how the lame uh, are able to walk, and the lepers are cleansed. You may ask, surely there's no greater miracles than that. And the Bible says, the deaf can hear. And you may ask, you, surely there's no bigger miracle than, than that. And Jesus said, the dead are raised. You see, these miracles, to me, are on the ascending order. You know, they are greater and greater in magnitude, right? You see, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf are here, and the dead are raised. You may ask, you, you may ask yourself, surely there's no bigger miracles than that. But... The last miracle outlined in this verse is not only the blind are able to see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf are able to hear, the dead are raised, but to the poor the gospel is preached. So the title of the sermon tonight today is called The Greatest Miracle. See, this verse outlines so many miracles, right? We see the dead are being raised, but that's not the biggest miracle. The greatest miracle is unto the poor, the gospel is preached. Because when God saved your soul from hell, it's so much greater than, you know, dead being raised. Because when dead are being raised, they will, they will die again, right? When the dead are being raised, they will die again. But when God 
gives you salvation, but also you shall never perish. And that is truly the greatest miracle ever. Because sometimes we, we may lose sight in life. In our lifetime, you might not see God healing the blind. You might not see God making the lame walk. You might not see God raising up the dead. But I guarantee you, in your life, you will see someone's life being changed because of salvation. Amen. And that is the greatest miracle. That's truly <clears throat> godly and possible. You might not see God raising up the dead. You might not see God healing the blind. You know, but if you are saved, you are the evidence of the greatest miracle that's ever been performed, the miracle of salvation unto the poor. The gospel is preached. And what is the problem of the world today? You know, just thinking about the bill being passed in New York about aborting babies up to the day of, of their birth. You see, what's the solution to this? It's always the gospel. What's the solution to all the problems in this world? All the problems in politics, all the sins, all the sodomy, abortion, all this wickedness in our world. What's the problem? You know, preachers can rant against all these problems in our world, but, but the solution is always the gospel. You know, the solution is always preaching the gospel. Preachers today fail to preach the gospel, and that's why our nation has become that wicked. Preachers have, have failed to preach the whole counsel of God. That's why we don't see God working miracles. See, the first step, the first step to solve all these problems is the gospel, because that is truly the greatest miracle. Again, you might not see God healing the blind. You might not see God making the lame walk. You might not see God cleansing the lepers. But if you are saved, you are the evidence of the greatest miracle from the God of the impossible, and that is unto the poor the gospel is preached. So we saw five great miracles. The blind are see, and we learn from that is you know Christian life. It's it's a continual it's a continual battle of pursuit. We should not lose sight. In the spiritual things, we should keep pursuing, even though it might get hard, you know, even though we might be weary in mind, but we should not faint. In the miracles of, of the lame um, being able to walk, we know that we have to ask ourselves, what do we really want? Do we simply want money, or do we want Jesus to change our lives? In the story of Jesus cleanse the lepers, we realize that our God is able to help our life. Our God is able to cleanse us, but if God chooses not to, we should not grow bitter against God because He has a bigger plan. In the story of the death here, we realize that you know God will always do what He has said. You know, He will He will heal you straight away and He's going to perform miracles. And in the story of the dead being raised, again one of the major problems we have in our Christianity today is the sin of unbelief. And we, and we are not able to remove mountains because we simply don't believe God can work miracles. But in the end, in the end, if you are saved, again, just don't worry about salvation if you, can, if you are still alive today. You know, if you are still breathing, and that's a miracle from God. Because it's God that's sustaining you every single day. The reason you can get up the reason you can sit right here hearing the word about being preached is a miracle of God because God can take away your life you know, just like a snap of, of the finger. And again, what's the greatest miracle? The gospel being preached. So if you have a friend that you know that's, that's not saved, preach the gospel to them. And even though you might not see God raising up the dead, but you will see God save someone's eternity from hell. That's right. And truly, to magnify the God of the impossible, the greatest miracle unto the poor, the gospel is preached. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thanks so much for today, and thanks so much for your word, and thank you for saving my soul, and thanks for raising up my dead spirit, that I, I'm able to see spiritually that you are a great God, and help us not limit your uh, not limit your power, but truly believe you are the God of the impossible, that you can work miracles in our life. And pray you will change our lives to help us uh, be, be closer to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.